All right. So uh, today we are continuing on to the next section of this book or this club, not not book. Um, and we're going to look at uh, test that and other testing related packages. Um, what that means exactly, we'll decide as we, uh, it, you know, when and if we get past test that, we'll decide what's next. Um, but for now, we're going to look at test that. And uh, today, I just want to go over kind of the structure that I'm envisioning for the next several weeks. And then I'll talk about the basics of test that, basically. All right. So uh, in the spreadsheet, which is linked in the channel, I uh, created a tab that is basically um, a breakdown of the package down for test that. Um, the idea is that as we go through, um, we should do one or more of these sections from test that uh, and or from the package down and mark them off as we go. And then we'll just try to finish this up. Last time I tried to be kind of um, fancy with this of uh, like finding all the functions that are exported and make sure we cover them even if they're not in the package down. But to make this much more manage manageable, I wanna focus on the package down. So the idea is just let's present it um, the way that they present it, basically. Um, any uh, thoughts on that before I go on? I, I'll probably go ahead and put a schedule in so that people know what they're signing up for. Um, so I'll, I'll just lay out what things we should cover each week, but as with any book club, if like you go to do the um, that section of the help and it's really fast, then uh, you know feel free to grab the next week's as well or fill in. In this case, you know it's okay to go out of order, so you could grab something from later on, that kind of thing. Um, but the general idea should work out, I think. Uh, and right now, what I'm planning is to um, go through the reference sections first and then the articles. Um, because I feel like at least in the case of test that for the most part, the articles are kind of, um, advanced, uh, topics versus, um, in some other packages, the articles are kind of the basic usage. And so we would want to start with those in that case, but here, I think we want to start with the, uh, some of the basics. And so I'm starting with how to run tests and a little bit kind of around just the idea of what test that is. Um, so, uh, test that is the, uh, package put out by our lib for, um, testing other packages. Um, uh, you can technically test other R code as well, but it's aimed at testing our, uh, testing our packages. Um, and you can do it really, you can use it really easily using use this, which is why it follows naturally from use this that if you just type use this, use test, and then the name of um, something, it'll create the test file for that and it'll set up all the infrastructure for it within your package. Um, alternatively, if you have an R file for your package open, so let's say you have a file named, you know, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of something generic, uh, but let's say it's github.r. So you have a, a file named github.r, it's all your, interacting with GitHub in your package. If you just type use this, use test without an argument while you have that file open, it'll create um, test github.r over in the testing directory, which is really helpful. You can go back and forth that way. There's also a use r, which will go from the test file back to the corresponding um, r file. It's just a convenient way to hop back and forth. Um, all right, so that's that's just the basic idea. You type that, and it'll ge generate this generic um, test. It'll create a file. It'll put a um, sample test in that file, and then from there, you can uh, you know write your tests. I guess to back up a little bit, um, if you are writing a package, it is a good idea uh, to implement testing early and um, as completely as you can. Now, there are some arguments that you can go overboard by writing too many tests, uh, but you want to you want to test. You know, you want to make sure that things work, 
And the reason for that, besides obviously you want your package to work, is it makes your life easier for future you that when you make a change, if you have tests in place, when you make that change, you can be confident that you didn't break anything if uh, if you your tests you know test everything. Um, and so when you make the change, you run the tests, you make sure that they still pass. You didn't accidentally break something that you had previously built. All right. So uh, like I said before, the, the thing I plan to focus on is this run test section. Um, and I think I put my tabs here in an order. Um, I think I did because there's a kind of an order um, to think about this in. Yes, because describe is not the third one. Um, so, okay. The basic function of test that is the function test that. Um, and what that's going to do is, uh, let's just look at the examples that, you know, you test that trigon trigonometric function match identities. So you give it some sort of description and then within the curly brace, you make expectations, which we're going to talk about the expectations in a separate week, but the general idea is the expectations are just, you're saying, this is what I expect to happen. So when I call my sine function with pi over four, um, I expect the result to be one over square root of two. Um, I, the same with the cosine and then the tangent should be one, et cetera. Um, oh, good, Rebecca is joining. Um, welcome, Rebecca. I'm just uh, going through uh, some basics about test that and, um, you know, feel free to ask questions if you have any, but you can also catch up on the YouTube. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I can back up just enough to say that, okay, the basic function of test that is this function test that, um, it is, uh, written to be something that you can read out loud basically. So you can test that trigon trigonometric functions match identities is the example here. So you give it a description of what you are testing. And then inside of it, you set up these expectations, uh, which I think next week we'll start talking about the details of the expectations, but it's just basically you're saying, I expect that these things will be equal or um, there are other things that you can expect. The basic expectation is expect true. I expect that whatever this thing is that I tell you should be true. And if it's not true, then it'll throw an error tell you which test it failed in um, and you know help you find what caused your bugs. Um, and so uh, very, you know, it's a very useful uh, idea to, to look for um, what's failing in your code. Um, one thing that I did get that was helpful from reading this is um, that you explicitly should always use braces in a test that test, even if it's something simple, um, because otherwise the failures won't um, necessarily tell you the right thing. I don't know that I've ever had a case where I had such a simple test that I didn't use braces and it's like, it's the default of how they set things up. Um, but it's good to note that, oh, always use the curly braces. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Uh, the other piece is that they just point out that they, it's intended that your tests read like a natural sentence. So test that multiplication works. Um, I like that idea of how it's programmed. Okay, I have a question. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, I'm aware of the existence of test stat, but I haven't actually <laughs> ever used it. So, um, this per, this brackets with grouping things, you're basically throwing multiple examples of the same vein together or yeah, logic. <laughs> so how to group is um something that I've An personally, art. yeah, like I've personally changed my mind about that sometimes. Um, you don't want to do it too much and you don't want to do it too little. Um, I'm sure there are better rules of this and maybe we'll get there uh, sometime in the course of this. Um, I think they talk about it a little bit in the latest version of, actually, I think they talk about it a fair amount in the latest version of the R Packages book because they okay. split the testing chapter into multiple chapters. 
Um, and I have not read those yet. So, um, but there is an art to it. You want things that are related, you know, you want the things to actually be related. Um, and like, sometimes I'll make one block of test that, that is like test that corner cases work uh, for this function, you know, test, hmm. test that trigonometric function corner cases work. And it's just all the oddballs that I did that didn't really fit into one of the other ones. Technically those could just go into the other tests that they're related to. Um, I'm sure there are like computer science rules for how to do that. Um, not rules, but you know, guidelines. Um, but it, I guess the, um, like it doesn't matter structurally, like it will work if you put all of your tests into one expectation or not one, one test that it's not a good idea because it's hard to find where it failed. Um, right. And th okay. that's the main thing. And you want your error message to be clean. So you know, expect that or test that trigonometric functions match identities. If it throws an error in that, you want to kind of immediately know, okay, that's in this part of the code and it's, you know, testing these sorts of things. And so vaguely okay. that's the idea. Uh, Oluwafemi, you have a question or a comment? Yes, I think my own question is still based on this uh, expect equal. So that means if the expectation is not equal, it's going to, the code is going to throw an error. It's going to return an error. Yes. Is it true? Okay, okay. And it's, Specifically, I'm, I'm, you know, it's hard for them to show that example. Um, let me see. Let me pull something up that is easy to show. Um, let me grab. I'll go ahead and get in our studio window shared so that I can show a real quick example of this as soon as I get something loaded. Um, because the idea, hopefully I can get it to show it nicely. So, cause it'll throw an error, but then test that like grabs that error and makes it a little bit more informative. Um, I, I didn't, I don't know. I should have set something up to make this really uh, easy to show. Come on, it's loading very slowly. Okay, let's do a new file. Why is my window laid out so weird? Um, I'm going to type something real quick and then I will share. Um, okay, let's see. Let's make sure that it does. Um, okay. It's not great. Okay, I'm so I'm going to share, and then I'll try to find something better to share. <laughs> um, so let's just go over to that. All right. So we're showing on on the screen. I just threw in this fake test of um, test that this thing works. Expect equal one comma two. Obviously, that is false. So if I just run that, it'll say error one actual not equal to two expected actual one expected two um it's uh like it can be really uh helpful um trying to or yes, so we're uh this they added these really clear um comparisons in a relatively recent version of test that where they have this package Waldo, um, which is named Waldo because it's where's Waldo trying to help you find where an error is or where a difference is. Um, and it, you know, so it's it's throwing an error that tells you, um, oh, and I guess, let me do another one just to show expect equal uh, run one. So if we run that, um, notice that it says line three that it's failing here. And so it's telling us exactly where in the test that it failed. Um, it shows us what you said, um, you know, actual is the first argument, expected is the second argument. So you 
saying this is what it actually is this is what it um what it should be and it tells you uh you know what what happened now that doesn't look very good because i don't have a a reporter running which we'll talk about more next week so i'm going to um uh before i do this i'll, I'll run this is uh an actual package that i wrote cookies um and i'm running the tests i don't know why my laptop is being slow today but uh it is running the tests in theory and i want to show you okay so this is what it does when you run the tests and it's going through these different files and it's checking everything and that you know thankfully everything passed and i'll go ahead and go in there and just in one of these files, I'm going to throw in this. Um, I'm going to throw it in at the end so that we get uh, a little bit of progress and then it'll fill. Um, and so now when I run the tests, it uh, takes a minute for some reason to get going. And then, so it's going through the test. It's OK. It's OK. And then, it's, oh, one of them failed. And it shows that report of what failed. And they'll keep going through um, and testing everything else. And so I can see, oh, it tested there. It failed there. And I can click it. And it opens exactly to the line where it failed. Um, so it makes it you know, as easy as it can be to figure out where things failed. Um, if this were a real function, then I could go in and you know, like if this failed, um, one of my favorite R Studio shortcuts is you can hit F2 on there, and it'll go to the definition within the package um, of where it is. I could set up debugging, and we'll talk about all of that uh, later. But that's the basic idea. That makes sense. Let me undo that. So you said that you know they should all be grouped under a heading that makes sense, but it is if you were to be lazy and stick a bunch of things in one <laughs> single thing they may actually make it quite easy to find yes yes okay. um the main problem is it um you know like this yeah message, message this thing down. works isn't right. very okay. helpful right. and right. if it were a big giant thing you know that wouldn't be helpful but it shows you where it is so it's, you know they help you deal with that um let's see so yeah that's all of that i'm going to switch back to just the window so I don't because I don't know what all I have open basically uh all right so share that all right so that's the basics um the other things that I'm going to talk about today are um the most part like weird cases past that so um so the test that is you know I had multiple instances of test that within each file. The file name is what set the uh, context column in that view that it showed where it's you know going through the different things. Um, all right, so the next thing that uh, is in this block that is just super useful to know is there is this function test path um, that finds, um, or, or it's like a um, the package here except specifically for tests. It's saying within the test that directory, find a file. Um, the reason this is super useful is if you're running tests like interactively as you're working on things versus if you're having the tests automatically run, the relative path, like the, the working directory changes. And so um, test path deals with that fact so that you don't have to have things work differently when you're doing things interactive versus when you're doing things uh, in the actual automated testing. Um, just a side uh, function, but very useful to, to know about. The reason that it can matter is you can have, um, uh, like maybe you'll have an, I mean, it's less, uh, less useful now because they added the idea of snapshots, which we'll talk about later, but I used to often have um, the correct answer would be stored in my tests, in my test directory, basically, like as a, uh, an RDS, and then I would load that and compare my result to, you know, the result that the function gave to the result that I expected, which might be a data frame with some properties and whatever. Um, so you can use test that to find that file. Now, they actually have a thing where they uh, it's test snapshot and it's you're telling it 
I want this result or I want, I want a specific result. Um, the first time you run the test, it records what the result is. And then after that, it, it makes sure that the result's always the same. Those are useful again for like coming back later and making sure that things are still functioning the way they were functioning uh, when you started. <laughs> and so you didn't break anything. Um, but you could also use this, you know, if you have um, some sort of helper that you want to run, uh, we'll get into reasons that you would want this, but it's a, it's a helpful thing to know about whenever you're running tests and you're like, oh, how can I figure out where I am? Because you can store things in that test that directory and they don't impact anything as long as they don't have some specific names like test hyphen uh, whatever you want to test. Did that at least kind of make sense? Any questions? All right. I'm confused. <laughs> as usual. Um, but so did you guys, so did, I mean, I'm sorry I was late. Did you guys talk you know, about this automated testing at the beginning? Is that not, sorry, I guess not in detail, but just the thing I was showing there um, within uh, a package, you mm -hmm. can, you'll, so when you, um, going back to just this function, use this, use test, um, mm -hmm. you use that function to create a test, mm. test file for, mm -hmm. um, you know, this would be uh, tests for the file named name uh, in this case. So name.r would have mm -hmm. test hyphen name.r over in the test that directory. When you call this function the first time in a package, it will add all the infrastructure mm -hmm. to run all the all the tests for your package. So it creates a directory tests. And in that directory, it creates a, another directory test that. And it creates a file test that dot r, which tells the or is it test that dot r or test that r one of the two, um, which tells yeah test that dot r, which tells um, the testing infrastructure how to run things, which is this uh, test check function that we're going to talk about in a second. Okay. Um, and, and so the automated testing in this case, I just mean like you can do control shift T mm. in uh, our studio will run that full check. And that's the thing that I was showing where it runs through all of my tests and tells okay. me um, what's wrong. Um, also, you can do the same thing uh, with GitHub actions so that when someone submits a pull request for a package, uh, for example, it'll run all the tests and make sure that their pull request didn't Doesn't break work. anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, the snapshot thing sounds a little confusing, but very useful. So I'm looking forward to getting, <laughs> yeah. to that, getting to that section. But exactly, that is one they added. That um, well, we'll talk a little bit later about the third edition of test that. Um, and when in there they added this snapshot snapshot idea, it is kind of the base test that you can run. You can set up a, a test or a snap, snapshot and make sure your function still does the same thing. Now, it's a good idea to probably do more specific tests than that because um, for one thing, the snapshot can get tricked by um, like maybe the uh, uh, class changes. It's storing it as text. So if, if it used to put out an integer and now it puts out a double, the snapshot won't necessarily see that, things like that. Um, again, we'll talk about that more when we do the snapshot testing section of the help, which is all this. All right, um, so test that, that's the basic one. Test path is just a, a side note that it's a thing that can be useful if you need to find tests within your test that directory. Why well, not test, find other files within that test that directory. Um, and now we're gonna get into kind of uh, some functions that are the wrappers to run a lot of things. So test file will um, run, uh, 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 a specific test, test that file. So um, I don't, oh, I pretty much never use this function because I'm always doing all of the files for um, a, for a given um, package. Or I'm just doing control shift enter, which will run the whole file that I happen to have open, which is equivalent to test file effectively, except that when you use test file, 
we're going to talk about these later, but there are, you can have helper functions and set up or helper files and setup files and teardown files that need to, or that basically set things up for your tests to run and test file knows to actually run that, um, run those. So that's what that's for. Reporter, I didn't know about this argument. This is actually also happening when you do the full package tests. Um, and there, uh, we'll talk about these in another, uh, you know, different week. Um, but there are different reporters that, so I showed the, I think that it must be the default compact reporter. That's what we're showing over on the right side of my screen. Uh, but there are different ones that will tell you different things, um, give different amounts of details. And so I'm actually really looking forward to that week when we talk about the reporters, because I didn't know that they existed until I was putting together this uh, uh, presentation. Um, anyway, so test file, again, I, I pretty much never run just this because that's saying run or test one specific file um, versus, let me see. Uh, test check is what is actually run by the package. Um, and so it's saying run all of the, yeah, it, so you give the name of a package and again, op, uh, optionally reporter, um, I guess check reporter is what I was showing. And it'll run all of the tests for this package. Um, Again, we'll talk about reporters in a separate week, but there are all these different reporters that can give you different info, including like they can generate um, uh, RMD output of this is how the test worked on this day, which uh, I need, I want to look more into because that's interesting that we can get kind of a, a report of how things worked. Um, there's also test package, which you know sounds confusing because let's see if we can find the uh, difference. Um, oh, there we go. So test test check is uh, the one that you you run. Like this is what you run all the time automatically. That's what my Control Shift T is actually running is test check, um, and that's a built-in R Studio uh, hotkey. But test package will run the test for an installed package. So you can say test package, uh, use this. If you have the tests, um, like I think you still have to have the source of the package locally, but it'll run those tests. Um, I don't know exactly when I would use this, but I guess um, an, a project that I work on is a set of packages for um, interacting with Slack. And uh, Jonathan CD, who uh, owns that set of packages, like he's he uh, is the maintainer, um, set up a whole set of tests that if you make a change, like there's the core package. So if you change something in the core package, it runs the tests for all the other packages to make sure that the change you made didn't break the other packages. So I, I assume he probably uses test package there. Um, Test local uh, again. I've never I've never used those, um, but it's you can say test the test the package that is um, you know at this certain directory. Effectively, Sorry, these effectively these are the same. I think if you're doing them in your current path, uh, go ahead. Um, for going back to test package, are all the tests? included in a package like a random tidyverse so, package can i just hit test package on it and see what they use i don't i don't think so let oh, me okay. um I, yeah i could test that but i don't have r up actually in this computer <laughs> yeah so i i ran one for one that i know that i didn't have a um i don't have the source files source? for it okay. and it didn't work okay. but if i do one that i do have let's see no um I cannot, so far, cannot get test package to work. Let me see. <laughs> well, it's working for, it seems to be working for the one that I ha happen to have loaded. Yeah. Huh. That's, um, I can't tell you when I would use test package and I don't fully understand when it works. 
Okay. I was envisioning it'd be a good um, learning experience for me if I could see for some nicely done packages, what easily see what tests they use, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you, so you can, if you go to, uh, GitHub. So uh -huh. like, for example, I mean, this is probably the weirdest test set to look at because I don't know if it uses itself. Um, it does. Okay. So <laughs> test, <laughs> test that has test that checks in it, which is all kinds of crazy. Um, so you can come in and, you know, like look at their, their tests yeah. within GitHub, or you can sure. install or, um, create a, a your own copy your own fork and look at mm -hmm. them okay um a lot of, like their tests can be hard to follow because their packages are so complicated in some cases for example you might think some of the things are in dplyr are relatively straightforward but then you get into the fact that the behavior changes depending on whether you're interacting with a database or if you're working with a local data frame or different things like that. So um, just, I, I don't be overwhelmed. Like that if you open sense. up a test Did file you, and yeah. yeah. Do you know of any, other than the R packages book, any place to, that you would recommend browsing for good search so, pass tests? I would look at um, like, depending what, I guess the best way to go probably is find something that you work with that isn't that complicated, like a package that does one thing and uh, start, you know, for starters, just look at what they do. Like, I can't think of a great example off the top of my head, except some of my packages I would, you know, like I do, I know because like, I know what the cookies package does. I don't think that's a great example because that one's shiny. Um, I, I don't have a great example off the top of my head, but that is something that we should talk about in the channel. So I'm sure I can come up with some uh, after this meeting. Um, but yeah, look at something that you use and first, you know, read through the tests and make sure you understand them. And then another thing to do, it would be, you know, th like the next step from that would be if you find a typo or something, um, try to fix that typo and make sure that you understand whether the tests need to be changed or not, um, or or like implement some uh, some repositories. Again, this is going to be a terrible example, but if we go to the the repo and hit issues, um, they might have a good first issue. They don't have any, but the tidyverse has this label: good first issue heart. Mm -hmm. um, in this organization and uh, I don't know if we can say anyway um, oh we want to go to open there we go and there you go so there there are some good first issues that's just an extension beyond this but you can um, use that to find things to to help fix and then look at the tests and make sure that like a lot of times um, when you submit something, they will say, okay, that's great. Can you write a test for this? Um, if you can't, then they'll help you with that. But if not, you know, if you know, if you can, that's a great way to um, make sure everything makes sense, basically. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, something that is, uh, interesting from this is, you know, like I said, I always just like run test check automatically, basically. Um, but it does return a list of information about the test results. So you could run it and assign it to something. Um, I could imagine doing that in a GitHub action to generate some sort of report, although the reporters do a pretty good job of that, um, or to, you know, run something else if it fails in this certain way or things like that. Um, I don't have a specific use case for that, but I could imagine there being something. Um, let's see. And then the other thing here is there are these special files. We will talk about 
all of these more in when we get to this test fixtures article. Um, but they they there are special file names. Um, so it, if they start uh, all the test files start with the word test, they're all executed in alphabetical order. Before that, before you run the test, it'll run anything that starts any file that starts with setup within that test that directory. Um, again, in alphabetical order. Um, uh, helper is also, uh, there's a set of functions or you can set up functions um, with these helper files. Um, and I love, they can be necessary for side effect decode that you need to run when developing the package interactively. Um, again, that vignette is gonna tell us a lot more about when and how to do those. And then they don't recommend these teardown files anymore, but teardown is executed at the end. Um, they have switched to within the setup, kind of setting up the, okay, and then when you're done, destroy it. Um, but uh, we'll get to that again in that vignette. That's for more complicated cases. Um, I'm trying to think, like there uh, in those Slack packages, for example. Um, actually, I just realized I didn't put this in setup, but it would make more sense that I just added a check to make sure that when you're running the tests, you have a certain environment variable that it's expecting set. And if you don't have it set, the tests just fail right away and tell you, hey, you need this environment variable set in order for anything to work. Um, and so uh, it, that's in like later packages in the family where they don't expect you to be setting up that variable. Um, so anyway, all of those files are for that kind of situation. And then the last piece of infer important information, um, which might not make sense if you haven't worked with some relatively advanced uh, R topics, including the book advanced R, um, but they, they put the, all of the tests into an environment um, that uh, is its own environment. And so it's, it's making sure that anything that you have in your local namespace isn't impacting um, the test. So if you happen to have a variable named uh, you know, test result in your environment and you run the test, it, the test won't see that variable. It'll see its own version. Um, that can be useful because sometimes like you'll think things are working and you run the test and it fails because it was only working because you had defined something in your environment and forgot to like save it in or export it in the package or um, different things like that. So that's what that is for to, to keep you safe from uh, mistakes or that sort of mistake. Did that all basically, did that make as much sense as it can make without just playing around with it? I think so. Okay. All right. Next up. All right. Um, there's this auto test. I like learned about this early on in my package writing uh, career or whatever, and then forgot that it was a thing. Um, I can't, or I think I did. It's vaguely familiar. Forgot this was a thing. Um, I haven't tried it out since reading about this, uh, but it seems like it could be useful where it, you can just tell it, hey, I'm making changes here. And every time you save the file that you have it looking at or, or a file in the path that it's looking at, it will run the tests and say, oh, nope, that failed. Um, in theory, like if, for example, if I'm um, refactoring code that already is well tested and I wanna make sure that nothing I do breaks the code, Having this run could be really helpful so that I know exactly when I broke the code. Um, you would definitely want the test to be really fast if you were doing this. Um, let's see. Um, and I love, uh, auto test might do these things in the future, but doesn't yet. Um, and oh, I, auto test package, which I think is the next, yeah, that's the next file we're looking at. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to that, that they have a package version of that, that you can say, okay, while I'm working on this package, um, tell me if anything breaks in the tests. I, 
I haven't experimented with either one of these to see, like, is it slow? Uh, you know, how does it work? Um, but it, it's a neat idea, at least. Um, so um, that's that. I, I, I want to try these out and see how that, see how they go. Um, it isn't anything that I've seen recommended recently. So I'm kind of wondering if this is an idea that isn't really quite there, or maybe they've set it aside entirely, uh, but it's, it's there, it exists. So next, this, they have a whole separate, like way of writing tests that I didn't know about. Um, I happened, uh, again, within that Slack family of packages that Jonathan CD wrote, he used this format for some of the tests. And I was like, what the heck is this described thing? Um, it's just a different, so in, it's like, instead of test that and expect, it's describe and a description and, a, and code. So I'm gonna go into that a little bit more, scroll down in a second, but just, it was like, oh, okay. Um, I almost want to, I kind of want to submit an update that they don't tell us what uh, BDD or DSL means within the help, which isn't very helpful. This is behavior driven development. It's a whole like philosophy of how to develop um, software and then um, uh, domain specific language is what DSL stands for. So it's a different language for tests that's aimed at behavior-driven development. Um, and so, yeah, it's made for them to read like sentences and thus be easier to understand what the specification of a function or component is. Um, so they're saying, and which I don't, the, the section doesn't read as a sentence. So, okay, I'm describing matrix. I'm describing this function called matrix. And then it has these, pseudo functions like it isn't even actually a function it's a function that's defined inside of describe um it's not an exported function but it can be multiplied by a scalar it can have not yet tested specs um and it can add two numbers it can divide two numbers and so the idea is that you just write out these things of how you want the function to work and the the overarching idea is that you write all of these it sentences at the start when you're like, I'm going to write this function called matrix and I'm going to write out all the things that it should do. And then I'll add inside of those actual tests of when I do these things, uh, these things, uh, you know, I should have these expectations. So it's the same kind of idea as test that, but it's, um, designed to be something that you you write out this whole doc of this is how I think it should work and then you fill in the actual tests as you build the code um I just thought it's an interesting thing that exists um they had they have this uh sentence that I haven't fully kind of internalized but use describe to verify that you implement the right things and use test that to ensure you do the things right so that's where I, I think, you know, you would describe at the start, you sit down and you, you make a describe set of tests that say, this is what it should do. Um, start and fill those in as you go, as you build the thing. And then I think the idea would be you convert that to a test that block when you're done. Um, I don't know. I haven't intentionally used this yet, but uh, uh, Jonathan CD wrote tests this way. And so I had to learn it. And I was like, oh, good. I can, uh, I'm, I'm going to be presenting about that next week. So worked out well. Um, so yeah, any, any questions on that? I don't have a lot of answers about it because I haven't used this much, but it's interesting that they have two completely different ways of, um, or not completely different, but, uh, structurally different ways of approaching this. And all right, we've got 10 minutes left and there's just one last, last one that um, I'm not going to talk about much because this is one that if you um, are doing C++ unit testing in our packages with catch, then this function matters. And 
I'm not. And so I did not go into a lot of detail about how does this work. Um, but there's this whole structure for uh, this library for um, certain types of C++ unit testing. Very high level uh, topic. And so I don't think this is really relevant to us, but for completion, um, I wanted to bring it up. So that is the uh, run test section. So um, I talked a little bit at the beginning, Rebecca, but uh, I I think because of the way um, let me the way that test that is structured, the articles tend to be fairly high level concepts and or you know like more de or more more complex content concepts. So I think we should do all the reference first, and then we'll come back to the articles when we're done. Um, and so I, I laid out on this tab in the spreadsheet that's linked in the channel, all the things that we uh, have to cover. And there we go, run tests has been covered. Um, and I'm gonna take these sections and group them up as a suggested order onto this tab so people can sign up for specific things. Um, and yeah, there, there, there we are. <laughs> okay, thank you for this, it's great. Uh, you're welcome. And I look forward to digging through because, you know, again, there were a few things in there that I did not know. Uh, and I use test that like every day. And so um, it's very helpful to go through these documents or this documentation in this much detail. Yeah, thank you. Also. All right. Thank you. I'll see you all next week. See ya. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, Bye. See you next week. Bye.